its idea sphere with Vanishing Bees, Science, Politics, and Honeybee Health, Daniel Kleinman and Sainat Suryanarayanan. It's called Colony Collapse Disorder, or CCD. A number of years ago, U.S. beekeeping operations realized they lost 30 to 90 percent of their beehives. It's a mystery yet to be solved. 2005-06, actually, some commercial beekeepers noticed something very strange happening to their beehives that they had never seen before. This was basically they opened up the lids of their bee boxes and found essentially ghost town. No adult bees, just gone. This was a change that was pretty dramatic from having healthy beehives to suddenly all gone. And when they looked for the bodies of these presumably dead bees, they couldn't find them. Usually with a typical dead beehive, you would find piles of dead bees near the beehive. Mm -hmm. Nothing. Gone. So beekeepers notified some honeybee scientists and said, we have a problem that we've never seen before. Do you know what's going on? And soon turns out that this was not just a problem facing one or two beekeepers, but it was a firestorm raging across the United States. Agriculture and ecological systems rely heavily on honeybees for pollination. That means about a third of what we eat is pollinated by honeybees. The reason that it's important for our food system is that although we commonly think of honeybees as about producing honey for us to put on our toast, honeybees do a lot more than that. And in fact, farmers rent perhaps as many as two million honeybee colonies to growers so that those honeybees can pollinate some 50 different crops, everything from almonds to carrots and cauliflower. Beekeepers and scientists have very different approaches to this conundrum, don't they, Daniel? There is a great deal of diversity among beekeepers, and the beekeepers that we initially focused on are a group who do field research, and they are looking at their hives, they are monitoring them, they are comparing hives in one place with hives in another place, trying to get a handle on what are the things that are affecting their honeybees. And in that context, other beekeepers were saying, well, those beekeepers, they don't really know what they're doing. They're not scientists. And I would say among the scientists, many would say, well, what they're doing isn't exactly science. But on the other hand, I think many scientists were saying, hmm, maybe these people are onto something and we should pay attention to the way that they're looking at this problem. Later on in your work, you realize in the research you've done that we need this mix to understand how to deal with this, and you're calling for citizen scientists to be more involved. In a way, yes, that's correct, Guy, that what we are calling for is essentially mechanisms to allow for greater, more enhanced participation of non-scientists, stakeholders, such as beekeepers and growers in the research that is affecting their lives and livelihoods. We also think that it's important to think more broadly about who is an expert. So that's where this idea of bringing the stakeholders together to collaborate, to think about, well, what is this problem and what are the different ways in which we might study it? And how might we do a kind of research that would lead to conclusions that all of the different stakeholders could find valuable. Vanishing Bees, Science, Politics, and Honeybee Health. 